there are days where when you look back on them five or ten years later you see them as a day when everything started to change real chapter 78 radically transformative life events moments that change everything for a person they don't come often in fact for some people they may never come at all but in the manga reel written by famed mangaka Inoue there comes a day for our protagonist Takahashi and his comrades and maybe even for the reader where everything does in fact change and I'm gonna tell you about this day and why real is a must-read manga now there aren't many narratives of fiction whether they be in a live-action format an animated format or even a written format that have gripped my heart and broken me down to the very core of my being bringing me to absolute tears in the process like real has I'm talking about a narrative that can trigger repressed emotion in the reader simply by virtue of its authentic journey of its characters and how they relate to the characters around them and more importantly to themselves there's a good reason why this manga is called real now some of you might be wondering how can a mere sports manga about wheelchair basketball no less elicit such a visceral emotional response now I'm no sports anime or manga expert but from the sports narratives I've consumed there's always more to it than meets the eye whether it's the coming of age story of a bullied junior high student rising through the ranks of the boxing world while simultaneously coming into his own as a person and grappling with the ultimate question of, of what it means to be strong in, in Hajime no Ippo or the themes of rediscovering your childish enjoyment for sports and life in general amidst the pressures of high expectations or the fear of loss and all the various other themes explored in the anime ping pong the point is for some sports anime, sports is really just the backdrop that the author uses to explore more intimate themes and foster the development of his characters. In other words, it's not just about the basketballs or even the wheelchair. It's about you and it's about me as human beings, how we interact, our relationships with one another. In our relationship with our inner self, our past, our inferiorities, what we go through, and the constant journey of moving forward, despite the multitude of setbacks that life has in store for us. Now, I have no interest in giving you a plot synopsis or a character summary, as there are other mediums that can provide this material, and more importantly, it would ruin the fun of diving into these characters and immersing yourself into their lives, discovering the story for yourself. But for the purpose of this day, this scene I want to illuminate to you, I'll have to explain a little bit about one of our main characters. His name is Hisanobu Takahashi, the typical high school jock and leader of the basketball team. He seemingly has it all, friends, popularity, access to any woman in the entire school, a bright future ahead of him in basketball and academics, and also a pretentious view of the world and the people around him. Takahashi is obsessed with ranking people around him on a scale of A to E, a measurement of their perceived social status, with himself being an A, of course. But after a tragic accident, his entire world comes crashing down. He wakes up paralyzed from the chest down in a hospital bed. Takahashi now realizes that his days of popularity at school are over. 
He even loses the will to live, as he feels he's now dropped from an A-class person to even below that of an E-class. Now this tragedy is transformative enough for Takahashi as it is, but even more significantly, it's an event that forces Takahashi to come face to face with his past trauma. Takahashi's father makes a sudden return into his life after abandoning the family when Takahashi was still just a child. This return catalyzes a personal transformation for Takahashi to the very core of his character as he must now come to grips with the deep-seated insecurities that have affected every facet of his person. Insecurities which stem from the unexplored anger and resentment he has toward his father. However, the silver lining in this tragedy are the people he meets at the hospital. His new comrades, Shiratori and Hanasaki. Shiratori being a pro wrestler, also met with a tragic accident, but who refuses to accept the fact that his pro wrestling career may be over. And Hanasaki, the typical weak, nerdy character who Takahashi would consider an E-ranker even if he weren't disabled, but who now, in a twist of irony, is actually further along in his rehabilitation than both Takahashi and Shiratori, further inverting Takahashi's view on society. A brief summary of who these characters are, but similar to the other characters in real and people in the real world, they are multi-dimensional characters whose layers will slowly peel away with each page of this manga that you turn. But now, to the day that I want to direct your attention to. The whole reason for me making this video. The one scene in this manga where everything changed for our main character Takahashi, and even for me reading this manga behind a screen, where I said to myself, there is no other narrative of fiction that has caused a character to feel so real while bringing me to the emotional brink in the process through how expertly its narrative was woven and how authentic its portrayal of Takahashi's pain and epiphany was. Without further ado, the main event of the evening, the return of the Emperor of Evil, the dastardly heel Scorpion. Scorpion being Takahashi's friend, Shiratori, who goes by that ring name. Now, Shiratori has had his mind set on his return to the ring since stepping into the hospital. Standing in the center of that squared circle for one final time was the inspiration fueling his expedient rehabilitation process. Much to the bewilderment of his hospital comrades, Takahashi, and even Hanasaki to a lesser extent. For Takahashi, his worldview is from the perspective of helplessness, of defeat, from the perspective of life as an E-ranker, a loser in a wheelchair. He sees the world as dichotomous, us and them, the abled and the disabled, the winners and the losers. And he believes a disabled person like Shiratori is no different. There are certain things we can no longer do, and we simply have to accept it as our new lot in life. We are the losers. Takahashi's other hospital friend, Hanasaki, has also shared this sentiment, but for the majority of his life. As illustrated by his anonymous letters to Shiratori, a plot point we will return to later on. But for now, what you need to know is that Hanasaki is a huge pro wrestling fan. And ironically, his favorite wrestler is Scorpion, the man who he has fostered a friendship with in rehab. And being a huge Scorpion fan, he has sent countless letters to Shiratori under the pseudonym Broom. However, in these letters, Along with the encouragement to Shiratori regarding his latest match, he also brags to Shiratori about his own life. The problem being, Inasaki constantly creates lies about his personal life or his career to seem, to use Takahashi's verbiage, as an A-ranker, 
in other words, a person of high social status. He does this perhaps to impress his favorite wrestler, Scorpion, but more likely it's as a way to deceive himself with illusions of grandeur and a form of escapism or self-medication. Thus, unbeknownst to Shiratori, he and Hanasaki are actually previously acquainted through the male in a sort of one-sided relationship. Oddly enough, this interaction had a profoundly positive impact on Shiratori's life. Receiving these positive letters of encouragement, or simply random points of dialogue at times, from his biggest fan, Broom, aka Hanasaki, became a bright spot for Shiratori, amidst the mountains of hate mail that comes his way, that comes with the territory of being a heel, and which ended up consuming his psychological health in an abyss of negativity. This illustrated by the jealousy he felt towards his previous tag team partner, Matsuzaka, the babyface to his heel, the light to his darkness. These emotions of envy and resentment towards Matsuzaka bred even further negativity and even violence in his personal relationships with his wife and daughter. This, coupled with the hatred from the fans, resulted in some of the darkest times in Shiratori's life, with Shiratori even questioning whether his career was really worth it. For Shiratori, his career wasn't supposed to be this way. He wasn't supposed to be this evil figure in the shadows. He wanted to be a rising sun, just like Matsuzaka. He wanted to be a hero. But ultimately, Shiratori succumbs to alcohol addiction, and his wife divorces him, causing him to become estranged from his young daughter. But back to the main event. There's a heavy tension in the air, and a nervousness between Hanasaki and Takahashi, as their friend Shiratori is returning to a sport in which a single botched move or mistake can cause major injury. Even with the full use of your legs, this is a dangerous sport. And for Takahashi, one that he believes Shiratori should have no business partaking in. I mean, he's just like me, Takahashi believes and there's no way he has the strength necessary to do something like this. Takahashi even derides the fans for egging Shiratori on, as he believes they don't really know the reality of this situation. But to Takahashi's surprise, Shiratori is able to stand up outside of the rope, shaky legs and all, using the rope as a support, ready to participate in this tag team match. The tireless hours of rehabilitation and training for this moment have seemingly paid off for Shiratori, but an even bigger shock to Takahashi comes next. Scorpion actually tags in. Takahashi cries out, there's no way he can cross that rope. He shouldn't even be able to stand. But Scorpion doesn't get in the ring. He doesn't have to. Instead, he uses the ropes as a fulcrum from which to choke out Matsuzaka with a steel chain. A move that gets an intense reaction or heat from the crowd. He's got the fans in the palm of his hand, without even having to step a foot from behind the ropes, the hallmark of a true heel pro. But despite these amazing developments, the worries, the doubts, the anxieties continue to flood Takahashi's mind and cloud him from being fully present in this moment, in this current reality of Shiratori. All he can think about is how Shiratori is going to embarrass himself, on top of already being paralyzed, if the fans found out the reality of his current condition. He thinks Shiratori has done more than enough. Shiratori needs to accept the fact that he can no longer stand in that ring as Scorpion anymore, and once the world finds out the truth about him, they will turn their back on Shiratori, just as the world has turned its back on him. But Hanasaki believes in Shiratori. And it's at this moment where Takahashi must begin to come to grips with the moment at hand, the reality in that ring. Shiratori now enters the ring on the shoulders of the tallest wrestler in the whole promotion effectively standing taller than he has ever stood before in that ring. 
In that Hanasaki suggestion, after the shocking turn of events, Takahashi finally decides to enter the present moment, to forget about the fears and insecurities of what might be, and to simply watch the reality of Shiratori in that ring. This switch in mind frame is what opens the door for Takahashi's transformation. The match continues with Scorpion fighting toe to toe, tooth and nail with his arch rival. He's diving off the top rope, he's got Matsuzaki in a sleeper hold, he's taken backward bumps into the turnbuckle, and much to the alarm of Takahashi, he even takes Matsuzaka's finishing maneuver, a running high knee from turnbuckle to turnbuckle, leaving Shiratori dazed as a setup for the second finishing maneuver to come. Matsuzaka yells out, Come at me, Shiratori! Well, it's running towards Shiratori, but amazingly, Shiratori actually counters Matsuzaka with a clothesline of his own, a shocking move for his friends Takahashi and Hanasaki, and even his rival Matsuzaka. As Shiratori even admits, he has now lost his lifeline. He stepped away from the ropes, the one thing that was holding his body up. Takahashi is marveled by Shiratori at this current moment. Someone who is just like him, undergoing the same treatment, in the same hospital, in the same situation as he is. Yet he's in a pro wrestling match, doing dives and taking bumps as if he wasn't even paralyzed from the waist down. He begins to wonder if this is the real strength that Shiratori had previously spoken of. However, the fans begin to notice that something is amiss. Scorpion is having trouble standing up, but they toss it up to the damage from the previous attack. Still, the calls for Scorpion to stand up rise. The Emperor of Evil, the most dastardly villain in all of Japan pro wrestling, the real Scorpion, could never let it end like this. And they're right. Both Hanasaki, the biggest Scorpion fan out there, and Scorpion himself know this. As a side note, Scorpion calls his fans the shitty bastards, as any heel would, and even refers to himself as a shitty bastard when he dove off the shoulders of a wrestler earlier on in the match, signifying that he really is no different than they are. And the last thing he wants to do is let those shitty bastards down. But with Scorpion unable to stand, all hope seems lost. Scorpion is on the ground, taking stomp after stomp, and Takahashi turns to Hanasaki saying, I guess that means Shiratori-san lost. He puts his strength into question, saying, what's true strength if he still loses in the end? For Takahashi, the world is divided between winners and losers, and to be strong is to win. To be strong is to have that A-rank life, the popularity, the women, the social status. But for Hanasaki, well, he's never had any of that. He would pretend to have that life in the letters he sent to Scorpion, but Shiratori saw right through that. And at this moment, so has Hanasaki. He responds to Takahashi. Takahashi, in terms of winning and losing, I always lose. And on top of that, I'm a liar. When Scorpion wins, that's cool. But when he loses, that's just as cool. Hanasaki, by many conventional standards, and specifically Takahashi's standards, is a loser who fabricates stories to escape from that reality. He's not all those things he wrote under the name Broom to Scorpion. He's not captain of his university's tennis team. He doesn't have his own IT company. There's no women confessing their love for him. There's no A-rank life here. He's not any of those things. But he's certainly not a loser either. Like Scorpion, when he loses, he's still just as cool. And as Scorpion is about to take a suplex from Matsuzaka to finish this match, he hears the yells of a certain shitty bastard, Hanasaki who rips up the final letter Broom ever wrote, 
symbolically rejecting the lies of his past life and confessing to being Scorpion's biggest fan, the man behind the name Broom, the shittiest bastard of them all. Shiratori's entire career, he secretly wished his small segment of fans would cheer his name, drowning out the ocean of booze. But no decent person would cheer a villainous heel like him. All he gets stuck with are a couple of shitty bastards who can't shout for shit. But for Shiratori to hear the voice of his comrade, Hanasaki, a man who's been ignored and unacknowledged his entire life, and for him to find out that Hanasaki is Broom, the single speck of positivity in the sea of darkness, it rouses him. He's not going to let this fight end just yet. He's going to keep fighting. He takes that suplex, and as Matsuzaka goes for the pen, he responds with a blast of poison mist from his mouth, followed by a seated takedown from the ground. Scorpion crawls over Matsuzaka's body and bites his head. In response to this chain of events, Hanasaki cries out, if his legs are no good, he'll use his hands. If his hands are no good, he'll use his teeth. You keep fighting with what you have left. It's at this point that Takahashi notices a change in Hanasaki. He's not his usual self. There's something about watching this fight that has sparked a change in Hanasaki. Watching Scorpion, the once menacing figure, now paraplegic, refuse to give up. Despite not having working legs, he continues to fight. If he can't use his legs, he'll use his arms and clothesline you. And if he can't use his arms, he'll use his teeth and bite you. Inside this ring, at this present moment, his paralysis isn't real. All that's real is that he refuses to lose, not just to his opponent, but to himself, to his own disability. And he'll keep fighting to the bitter end. Hanasaki watches this and realizes that even though his current situation isn't an A rank life, he doesn't have to coat his life in lies. There are great things he can do with his own two hands, just as Scorpion is doing that right there in that ring. In tears, he tells Takahashi, this is the real me. The tears flow just like the cheers for Shiratori do for Hanasaki. But for Takahashi, the words, the real me, reverberate inside his mind, as if they were bouncing off the walls of his head over and over. What does it mean, the real me? Takahashi, stunned, asks why Hanasaki continues to cry. And all Hanasaki can respond with is, I love pro wrestling. Hanasaki says a truly great pro wrestler can make even a broom look good. And that's exactly what Scorpion did for Hanasaki. The story Scorpion is telling in that ring is the story that Hanasaki wants for his own life. To hell with all the cloaks of lies and deceptions, the masks of deceit that avert the eyes from reality. In that ring, in this moment, there is no A-rank life. There is no E-rank life. There is no social status. There is no paralysis. None of that matters. None of that is real. In this moment, all that's real for Hanasaki is Scorpion fighting with every tool he has left. He knows that Scorpion sure as hell won't lose, and neither will he. For the first time in Hanasaki's life, he sees the real him. He is Scorpion in that ring, refusing to let his disability defeat him. No, I can't walk, but I'll stand taller than I've ever stood before in this ring. There are still things that I can do. I may not win, but I refuse to lose. It brings Hanasaki to tears. No longer do I have to live a lie anymore. This is the real me. 
Scorpion and Matsuzaka trade vicious headbutts that resound throughout the arena. And Takahashi is beside himself. He cannot believe that Shiratori is serious. How could Shiratori continue to fight this hard against his opponent despite the fact that he's crippled? He knows he's gonna lose. Why does he have so much passion? Why doesn't he just give up? He's done more than enough. He's just like me. We rehab at the same hospital for crying out loud. He shouldn't be this strong. I mean, we're the losers of society, right? Takahashi's worldview is beginning to crumble right before his very eyes. Flashback to Takahashi's old life, where he's described by a fellow A-ranker as naturally gifted, good at studies and athletics without the appearance of putting in too much effort, nonchalant, rigid and dissatisfied, an aloof persona, in a guise of nihilism and effortlessness. Takahashi says this label was perfect evidence. Perfect evidence for the fact that his fellow A-rankers, the ones who should be able to understand him the most, don't know the first thing about the real him. No one does. The real Takahashi has been locked away for a long time. Inside of a fragile jar, hidden inside a tightly sealed box, where no one can reach him, and no one can hurt him again. But the real Takahashi has been desperately trying to escape this prison. Desperately trying to be heard. Desperately trying to be understood. Mom tried to connect. She searched for the real me, but she could never understand. She could never understand the pain of coming home after hitting your first three-pointer in a game. The shot you worked tirelessly on with your father who was no longer there to see it. The pain that he was no longer there to teach you any new moves or to watch you finally become a starter or graduate to high school and become the leader of the high school team. Why had he left? Friends tried to open that sealed box and pry open the glass jar, but I shut them all out. Even if you could relate to my pain, you're no a ranker. You're not allowed to know the real me. No one is. I don't need your understanding or sympathy, and I sure as hell don't need your connection. I don't need friends or teammates. I can do it all on my own. No one can hurt me. No one will hurt me again. I am invulnerable, invincible, until I wasn't. Until that fateful day when Everything changed until that day I could no longer feel below my chest. The day I lost all popularity, the status, the athletic future, the A rank life, until the day I became a loser. How could you people possibly understand? But wait, Shiratori. He's just like me. Yet why is he so strong? Why is Hanasaki so different all of a sudden? The real me. What does it mean? Takahashi sought the inability to be vulnerable. The strength to not need help after the childhood trauma of his father abandoning the family. But as Shiratori is displaying, that isn't real strength. And that isn't the real Takahashi. The inability to be vulnerable and to need people simply means that you yourself are not needed. And that is the biggest fear in Takahashi's life. Being unneeded. To Takahashi, his father abandoning him meant that his father no longer had a need for him. And now, 
this accident has left him paralyzed, which meant that the world no longer had a need for him. But seeing Hanasaki's transformation right before his very eyes, watching the true strength of Shiratori to continue to persevere and fight in that ring, the words of Takahashi's father wash over him. It's okay if you don't win. Just don't lose. It's okay if you don't have the A-rank life. It's not real. There's still something you can do. And don't ever lose hope. And he breaks through. Gone is the cold, aloof, uncaring facade. Gone is the anxiety of how the crowd will perceive Shiratori, or how society will perceive him as a disabled man. Gone is the invulnerable man in the hedgehog armor whose heart cannot be pierced but who can no longer connect to the hearts of others the man who needs no one but who is no longer needed and at that moment nothing else matters the false mirror has been shattered leaving only the reflection of the reality in that ring Shiratori refuses to lose, just like Takahashi, and the tears stream down his face, and he screams with all his might, Shiratori-san, don't lose. This is the real Takahashi. The headbutts continue, a battle of wills between Scorpion and Matsuzaka until Scorpion is out cold. The match is over. Takahashi was right. Scorpion lost. But Matsuzaka, the light to Scorpion's darkness, tells him these words. You're still a pro wrestler, aren't you? Stand up! And Scorpion laboriously crawls to that corner, dragging his disabled body with his arms, and the solemn silence envelops the crowd. The reality of Scorpion's paralysis has become painfully evident to every single person in that arena. But Shiratori continues towards those ropes. He understands that the true strength of a pro wrestler, no, of a man, is to be able to stand back up on his own two feet after he's fallen. Whether it's at the hands of Matsuzaka for Scorpion, or at the hands of life for Shiratori. The crowd gasps as Shiratori assumes the position to move from seated to standing. A movement that he's practiced countless times during rehab, but he's never truly been able to do it. But this time, he does it. He's able to stand on his own two feet, with his arms raised high like a champion. And the crowd breaks out, cheering his name, and tears run down the faces of his comrades. Shiratori always did want to hear that crowd chant his name. He wanted to be that rising sun. He wanted to be that hero. And on this day, he finally is. Scorpion may have lost, but undeniably, Shiratori won. This is the real. Shiratori. There are days where, when you look back on them five or ten years later, you see them as the day when everything started to change. Today is one of those days. This is real. Now that's the end of my analysis. Hopefully you stuck around this long. 
I really hope I did this scene even a semblance of justice, but truthfully, to truly understand its impact, it's something you have to experience for yourself in the context of the story and the proper build-up. But if you like this style of video, please go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for future videos like this, and thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.